Hey, what is up YouTube? This is Pyros here with another one of my videos and today we are going to do a tier list for Nobunaga's Ambition. We've done one before for Romance of the Three Kingdoms, we've done one for Dynasty Warriors, we've done one for Samurai Warriors. So to follow that tradition, we're going to do one for Nobunaga's Ambition. Now just a quick uh, overview of the series. I would say I don't like it as much as the Romance of the Three Kingdoms games. I enjoy those a lot more. Um, but I will definitely say that um, Nobunaga's Ambition is definitely uh, has its own unique take on the genre, um, the strategy uh, genre for that matter. Uh, obviously, it's a different time period. Here, it focuses on the Sengoku Jidal of Japan. Um, there's so many different clans to uh, play around with. And the game is more uh, historical focused and more um more of the war game and can be uh i would say more uh com in many cases more complex than the um than the romance of the three kingdoms games however i would say these games really suffered uh in combat we'll get to them uh when i talk about them and if you've noticed here there's a ton that i just haven't played um they're all listed here and also you'll notice too that we're left aligned for some reason I'm not sure why, but uh, here it is, so uh, <laughs> enjoy this. But um, all I gotta say is uh, let's begin. And we're gonna start off with the first title in the chronological order that I've played, and that is Nobunaga's Ambition Rise to Power. Uh, this one uh, was for the PS2, and I've played a good amount of this. I've beaten this once to its completion. Uh, but I've started multiple uh, campaigns uh, with different factions, different scenarios, different years. There's not too many scenarios to play with, unfortunately. There's uh, six historical ones and one fictional. Um, and three of them you don't get until after you beat the game. And there's nothing... The latest scenario is when uh, the Fateful Clash, which is when uh, Mitsuhide Akechi betrays Nobunaga Oda. Um... I wish, and that that's it, I wish there was more that took place later, like in the 1600s, you know, with the Battle of Sekigahara, that unfortunately, that scenario doesn't exist, unfortunately, um, so it's limited in there, but uh, for the rest of the game, uh, the cool thing, or what I like about this is each um, city and province that you own can basically be built from the ground up, from the facilities uh, that you build. So it's really cool seeing how things build up from that way. Um, not to get too in depth in things, but what really hurts this game to me is the combat. It's a uh, real time, uh, yeah, real time combat, and it's just very sloppy. Even you can have officers with high skills, and when it comes to taking over cities, it's just a pain. The attackers get so many penalties, and the defenders is like almost easy. Um, but if you bring a lot of troops and manually play every battle, you'll most likely win because the auto resolve is hit or miss. Um, but that's what ultimately really hurts it for me. But I still like played it to completion and had fun. But man, when you get to the end game, having to scroll through every single city to upgrade every single thing, it gets incredibly tedious. A lot of the Nobunaga's Ambitions games suffer from late game tedium, and Romance of the Three Kingdoms can as well for some. I think it's it's a problem with most strategy games, but with Rise to Power, it's a huge issue. Although, um, I do like the more narrative um, uh, take on it, how they have it that, okay, you know, they added fictional events um, to the game, uh, fictional quests that you can uh, participate in. And it's also pretty historical with events as well, so that's always good, and that's in most of these Nobunaga's Ambitions games. So I really enjoyed, I enjoyed this one, though I do think the uh, battle system hurts it overall in the end. Looking at this now, we got five titles to go. I think I have a pretty good idea where I want this to be, so I'm going to put this at the B tier. Alright, the next is Nobunaga's Ambition Iron Triangle. Also for the PS2, and this one I know I'm going to get some flack for, but I really just wasn't a fan of this one. Um, this was uh, much different than uh, Rise to Power. 
um, a bigger focus on it was on technology and you know using your characters and using the officers that you get the samurai what, what have you use them as um, uh, for technology so there's more that you can do with them um, and the gameplay for building up your towns and facilities and everything is much different um, instead of it being in like each uh, province you have having its own little town inside it's all done on an overhead map and it feels it, it suffers from what I think Romance of the Three Kingdoms 9 suffers from it's just really chaotic because it's a hundred percent real time so it's just you know you pause make your actions and play um, and I found it to just be a little over complicated you know just overly complex the UI just wasn't very clean I honestly uh, you know I, I give all Nobunaga's ambitions a, a fair chance and you know some of these Nobunaga's ambitions games I've actually completed multiple times and you know we'll get to that but this one every time I boot it up I just I just can't do it man it, it just the UI is just not good and it really you know puts me off and yeah I'm just not a fan of this one unfortunately um, now I don't want to say F because I don't want to say oh it's the worst thing ever and I feel like I haven't given as much of a chance as I probably should but just because I really every time I pick it up and I try to play it I can't go through it eh, I'll give it a, a D I know it's an unpopular opinion probably gonna get flack in the comments but it is what it is Alright, the next for me is Sphere of Influence, which was my first, this was either my first or my second Nobunaga's Ambitions game, but I played this one, and I really liked what they did here. I felt, I, I did a whole review of this game, and I really enjoyed it uh, for what it was, playing as uh, the different factions, as obviously all these games have. Um, I like the way diplomacy works, you know, uh, setting up marriages. That was a lot of fun, even though it could be hell of abusive. <laughs> I felt that the uh, UI was pretty clean, so it was easy to, um, you know, to set orders, to develop your, your places. It did feel a little simplistic at times, I will not lie about that. Um, but there was a lot to play around with, like, you know, you had the Imperial Diplomacy, you had regular diplomacy. Um, the game kind of involved a lot of waiting until something happened um, for certain types, but I would say the battles were definitely a step up from Rise to Power, um, even though it did feel kind of simplistic at times, you know, just attack and then they, then use your, um, uh, use like the tactic that's assigned to the officers. So it did definitely feel uh, simplistic there. Uh, but I found the uh, game to just be much more satisfying as a whole. And it moved at a pretty quick pace. Like once you'd get past a certain part, it would start moving quicker. Uh, there was multiple ways to end the game. You know, you could either just take over everybody or do a war ban. So if you just want to, you know, make it quick, quick cut and dry. Um, and I've beaten this game several times at this point with different uh, factions. So I definitely had a lot of fun. My favorite was the uh, the Auchi clan. That one I had a, a hell of a story with. I ended up uh, my vassal Montanari Mori gave me uh, his daughter, you know, and basically I had her as an officer, and she basically was like running the game. Like she she was a beast. Her stats were incredibly high. It was a lot of fun. Um, I really enjoyed this game. Uh, I gotta say and you know i still boot it up every once in a while the historical events there's a ton of them to to discover so i would say out of all the nobunaga's ambitions games i would say this is probably the best you know especially for the ruler play so i'm gonna put this one at s all right so the next one is ascension and i'm not gonna add too much to it um, but the big thing here was the first time ever we had officer play, which I was ecstatic for. Um, and that's basically playing the game. It seems like that's what the game is designed for. 
Now, what I've mentioned before with how things were, you know, could feel very simple with developing your towns and building castles and all that stuff, uh, with the first Nobunaga's Ambition, it felt um, they really wanted to address that, so they wanted to make it, um, you know, more complex with each, uh, with, you know, facility uh, development, roads were still a thing, obviously. Um, they had it now that you had your own domain as well as where you were um so like there would be you know the castles and stuff but you also had your own domain you could build friendships get on quests you know and there was also uh iron that you had to worry about and wood to build buildings so they definitely um expanded upon it and the cool thing as well is they added all the dlc scenarios from sphere of influence because there was a crap ton of them they added all the scenarios there, and it's a it's a lot of scenarios, so it just feels like you know a better package there. But in a way, it actually was a step backwards in other retrospects. Um, one of the big issues um, with this game is the ruler play was you, you can tell like most of the focus was on the officer play. Uh, loyalty was of officers was way worse here because it seemed like a lot of officers were more disloyal than in the first game in the first game you can or i guess not first game um sphere of influence you can maintain your officers and there may be some disloyal officers but if you can get them to marry or if you can uh you know persuade them with gifts you know do certain things make sure they're treated well you can get away with um though to be fair there are more options that give you like an inner circle you know to really help boost loyalty um and also helps with ruler play as well um but even with the officer play i never was really that i thought it was going to be better than what it was because you're basically stuck to a location um in a way i i think yeah it, the way it is it just seems like you're really stuck with the location and kind of what you want you know wherever the ruler is um and there's not really a lot to do as a free officer unlike the romance of the three kingdoms games where you can participate on like a, a different quest and really just like explore the world if you want you really don't get that here and it's just not you know so you're basically just it's more just rising through the ranks um which it is fun but it def for like a first time but there definitely could have been more with it and unfortunately, the sequel Taishi just dropped it entirely. So um, there was also some bugs and some weird glitches um, that was with the game, resources-wise, and all that stuff. So even with that said, I do think it's a step above Rise to Power. But even with the officer play, I do feel like it's a it's a bit of a step below Sphere of Influence, just because Sphere of Influence felt like a much more polished and tighter experience. Uh, Nobunaga's uh, Ambition Ascension was just, it was trying to be more ambitious, you know, with officer play and whatnot, but I think it bit off a little more than it can chew. Um, it's a shame, though, like I said, that after this game, they just abandon uh, officer play. All right, and the last game that we're going to talk about, which is, from what I can gather, the most recent iteration of Nobunaga's Ambition is Nobunaga's Ambition Taishi. Now, this game I did not play on the PC, I only have this game on um, on the PS4 because on the PC, this thing is always freaking expensive. It's almost impossible to see this game on sale, and when it is, it's still really expensive. Um, I would say that this was a step down from both Sphere of Influence and Ascension. Um, Graphically, it looks worse. I don't know how you did that. Um, in terms of campaign management, it's just weird. It is, it's like some weird hodgepodge of it trying to be complex but and trying to be simple, but not really knowing what it wants to do. Um, so it's just... It's, it's messy when it comes to managing provinces... Um, and all that stuff. Battles are at an all-time worst. Forgot to mention this, but Ascension's battles are slightly better than Sphere of Influences. But Taishi's battles is far worse than anything. And 
I would say, in a way, even worse than Rise to Power because, again, once once a freaking again, it favors um, defenders, and it can be weird. Like it's weird to understand. Like you can bring an army of like twenty thousand fighting an army against like five thousand, and somehow you can only bring like three thousand in battle. I don't know what causes that. I don't know why it's like that, but the game never really explains why that happens. You'll run into really weird scenarios like that, and it makes expansion just not fun, which sucks because that's basically the name of the game, is to grow and expand. Um, diplomacy is, you know, pretty easy to, to manage, so, you know, they kept it similar to uh, the sphere of influence that way. Um, I would say that really is what gets me though is the battle system. The battle system to me is really the worst part. So just to kind of explain it a little bit more, um, it does like this stop, start stop thing. So you send, okay, tell your units to attack, do this, do that. And then after some time it'll pause again and then you can either continue with the orders or say something else like use this tactic. It feels clumsy, it feels clunky, and it favors defenders way too much because morale swings wildly like you can destroy basically like two three armies but if you're taking too long the morale would switch to the other side and you'll start to get beat even if your officers are better it's honestly even in like favorable odds maybe it's just i suck but i just found the battles to not be fun but then again like defending is very easy because you have all these towers and all that stuff to help benefit you and if they don't take out the towers well then you're fine like nothing will happen <laughs> to you you know what i mean like you'll get all these morale benefits and stuff i don't know what happened i wanted to like this game and i'm thinking about going back to it again just to give it a try um i like the whole um the console system so basically when you have consoles everyone will give ideas and stuff and you can use the, re the points you get from that in order to um, research new things, you know, add new um, options for you to pursue, you know, get better weapons, better performance in battle, etc., etc. But, you know, better harvest, all that stuff. Like, there's a lot to there, and every um, clan feels unique in goals that they can achieve in order to get different bonuses. But, man, I would say they really dropped the ball on this one. I'm still going to put it, I know, I know, I'm still going to put it above Iron Triangle because like I said, Iron Triangle is just a convoluted mess UI wise. Here the UI is actually kind of clean even though it it's not a pretty game and it actually looks worse than Sphere of Influence. Not sure how you did that, but okay. Um, so yeah, it's uh, interesting to see the state of the Nobunaga's Ambition game and to me, like I said, I just find it to just be not as good as the Romance of the Three Kingdoms games. I prefer those games over this, uh, which is interesting because I think the Sengoku Jidao period interests me more overall than the Three Kingdoms period. Um, but, you know, it doesn't, just because it has a more interesting period to me doesn't mean the games are going to be better. Uh, because I do like the Samurai Warriors games a lot more than the dynasty warriors games now but unfortunately you know i can't say the same for the nobunaga's ambitions games versus the uh, romance of the three kingdoms games there's definitely a range of quality in the titles and while i do like sphere of influence it doesn't it doesn't hold the same um it's not the same as like romance of the three kingdoms tend to me again if you love these games and you enjoy it more than the three kingdom series all the more power to you i'm just you know expressing my opinions here as all these tier lists are and i'm curious to see what you guys think about these games let me know in the comments below thank you guys for watching as always and this is powerhouse signing off